So maybe when we talk about muscle loss and GLP-1s, we're talking about like redistribution of fat and inflammation in muscle cells and not necessarily the loss of true muscle. She talked a ton about how we need to get better at measuring not only the size and what is lean muscle, but like, what about strength? What about usability? What about all these different things? Let's talk about GLP-1s and muscle mass. This is a joint session with multiple researchers talking about this topic. It's very good. I'm at Obesity Week this week doing coverage of all the latest breaking research and news that's happening in the GLP-1 space. Thanks, you can see a inflamed adipose cell tissue with a regular. And then he takes that inflamed one, adds GLP-1s to it, and it looks back like a regular. Stay with me. He said that's happening in our muscles too. Our muscles are inflamed and that inflammation is being removed without muscle tissue. But the way in which we look for muscle mass can't depict the difference. So Dr. Yumi Kang comes on next and she talks about all the different ways you can try to tell the difference between lean muscle and like lean muscle becoming less inflamed. Things I didn't know, sometimes bone isn't included when people define lean muscle and I don't think bone should be in Maria's definition of it. Don't panic about the charts, I'll explain them. This is percentage of weight loss right here. Obviously it goes down over time between seven and 12 months. Lean muscle kind of plateaus and then percentage of lean muscle goes up over time because there's less fat. But most importantly, this is bottom one down here. Over time, these people had an increase in grip strength. So she was testing how functional the muscles were, not just like how big they were. Um, and she found they increased in strength. I thought this research was really, really interesting. I cannot wait to see more research measuring strength and functionality of the muscles with GLP-1s. Let me know in the comments what you think. We're still on day one of Obesity Week. As always, this is educational content. I'm sharing the hard work of these wonderful humans.